Okay, today I'm going to show you this paint technique, getting a very textured modeled effect with your paint. And you can do a lot with this technique. This is a, a journal cover that just has this technique on it, no, tr no other treatments on it. This piece has this textured technique. It's very three-dimensional with beeswax over the top and then some aging around the edges. You see that? And this piece has a lot of different colors with a lot of aging around the edges on it and it turned out pretty good. You can see a lot of the texture and depth in it. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is protect your work surface and put down some newspaper or if you have one of those non-stick mats that's good too because um, this is very very messy. Um, you'll need a piece of cardboard, heavy cardboard. Um, this is a back off of an old book. A uh, piece of wood, something very sturdy. You can't do this technique on just paper because it requires a lot of really wet layers and it will cause your paper to roll up. So first of all, you take your backing piece and I'm using Liquitex Gloss Medium. Um, I like this better than Mod Podge because it dries quicker and it's not as sticky after it dries. Um, but a lot of people prefer Mod Podge, that's fine too. So what you'll do is you just brush this on and quickly um, collage your background. Add your pieces. Add some more. It doesn't have to be perfect. The majority of this will be covered over by your paint, but you do want to be able to see some of your design, either by music or or um, newsprint or book pages are nice. Anything that has a little bit of design in it that you can see through your paint. going to quickly collage this together. I'm outside today because my kids are being noisy, so the wind's blowing a little bit. So, we're just going to collage this. And if it gets too dry, you just add more, add a little bit more. medium, gel medium, or Mod Podge. If you're using Mod Podge, that, that works too. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a layer of crackle gel. And this is just very, you know, the Delta Ceram Coat crackle gel. It's a one-step cheap alternative. And we're going to put that down in a nice little layer. Just brush that on. Now normally you would wait for this to dry. You don't want it to get completely dry, just tacky. Um, but to show this technique, I'm going to go ahead and, and put the paint on. So for your paint, you want to put a little bit of water in a paint pot. Um, I'm going to use a tan color. You're going to want this to be pretty wet. And you can get different, different looks. I 
after you play with it a little bit, you'll know how, how much paint to add for how much water. Really, you just want a very watery mixture of paint. The more paint you add, the less you can see through it. The less paint you add, the more watery it will be, and you can see more of your background. So it really just depends on what look you want. After you've played with it a little bit, you'll, you'll know what you like and what it looks like. So I just pour this on a little bit at a time, because I probably mixed up too much. You just want a little bit laying on top. Now you're going to take your cornstarch and you're going to get messy. You can use a spoon, but I like to flick it on with my fingers. And you see it really gets pretty messy. And just flick it on. You don't want it, so this area right here is actually a little too much in one area because then that, like underneath that, is going to be mostly background and less paint. So you really kind of want to get it spread out here and there. This is a little better, this area over here. Anywhere that you have too much liquid, you can add a little more cornstarch. And then you're going to want to let this dry overnight. This is the messy part. So you let this dry overnight. It's very important. You can't use your heat gun with this. This is one, one thing that you can't hurry it up with. So let this dry overnight. Once it's dry, I did this one yesterday. Once it's dry, you're going to have something that looks like this area over here. It's all going to be rough and dry. And you take this, see how that comes off? And you can knock it over a trash can or take it outside and knock it. And you're still going to have some excess stuck to your larger, more textured areas. So I'll take a nice soft brush and gently, very gently, very gently rub over those areas. If you rub too hard, you're going to end up um, removing your texture that you've created. And that's not really what you want. So you're just trying to get the excess cornstarch out of your paint. And it creates a very nice, pretty texture. The rest of this I already I already brushed yesterday just to get a jump on things. Okay. So you have your background, it's all nicely textured. It's important to seal this, otherwise over time these really textured the higher areas will chip off eventually. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some gel medium in a tin, not a whole lot. And if you like the distressed look, if you want to age it, then I take the Tim Holtz Distress Ink. This is Vintage Photo. Um, these are the re-inkers. I love this stuff. I just put like a drop. It doesn't take much. And you just mix that in and you can see you get a very nice aged gloss. And then you just brush that over the top. It doesn't take a lot. You can see it's already darkening these areas here. You want to work it in. You, nice, nice soft brush is good for this. You want to work it in all these little cracks and crannies. And you get a nice aged look to all of this. And if you want it darker, you can add more 
Distress Ink. If you want it lighter, just a very light hint of a yellowing, and you add less. And I'm just going to scrub this over the front. Nice soft brush gets it in all the little, all the little areas. And you can also do light coats. So if you get done with this and you really wanted it darker, you can go back in and add more to the edges. Make it a little darker. It's really easy to suit this to your own tastes. There are so many different styles and looks you can get with this technique. It's really a lot of fun to add texture to any mixed media project. So you want to make sure it's all sealed really well. And you can certainly just put if you like the white style, like I did on my journal cover, you can certainly just put a clear layer of the gloss medium or matte medium, any kind of sealer, gel medium, Mod Podge over the top just to seal everything in. And okay, now that that's all sealed, I think I want to add just a little bit more darker around the edges. So I've added another drop of the Distress Ink and this is going to make this really dark. Because I didn't add, I didn't add more gel medium. So this is really darker around the edges. So this is going to give me a nice dark edging. I'm just going to go around the edges of the piece with this and just kind of lightly blend it in. blend it with a very light swishing motion. I know I'm very technical here. You can tell that I'm self-taught. Couldn't give you a technical term if my life depended on it here. I just like to play and have fun. And share. I hope you all are really enjoy can enjoy this technique and have a lot of fun with it. would certainly love to see anything that you come up with. Please feel free to email me or send me a picture or send me a link. I would love to see your artwork. I think that's a very important part of the artist community is the sharing of our artwork. It gives people ideas that they wouldn't have thought of before which can, in turn can give you ideas that you never thought of before. So we're getting a nice, a nice aged look around the edges, and you can just keep going with that. That's the same way that I did this one. Just kept adding darker and darker little bits to the edges. Darker and darker layers of the gel medium with the Distress Ink. And now from there you can add you can add a doll or lettering or found objects. A lot of my found objects I'll use E6000 to attach them. It's a good glue. Pretty much glues everything and it's flexible when it dries so that you don't have to worry about it cracking and aging and getting hard as it gets old. So I hope you've enjoyed that and uh, hope you have fun with it and I hope you have a great day.